guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katherine, and in this video, we are going to talk about APIs. API stands for Application Programming Interface. Let's break down these terms. What is an application? An application is an app. Every day, we open social media apps and game apps on our smartphones. These are applications. What is programming? Programming is what software engineers or developers do in order to get these applications, these programs, to work. They program software. What is an interface? An interface is a common border shared by two applications. Let's try mapping this out. Essentially, an API is a way for two programs to communicate with each other. They communicate through this API, this interface. Ultimately, an API allows programmers to write code that allows one program to talk to another. Now, why would we ever need two programs to communicate? And why would one ever need data or information from another? Software developers often use APIs to enhance the functionality of their application without writing a bunch of tedious code or reinventing the wheel, so to speak. In order to get this functionality, their program would need to talk to another program to get the appropriate information. Let's take a look at an analogy. Lots of APIs give information and data. In this case, our API will give us food. Imagine you're hungry and thinking of ordering something online or on your phone. To receive the food or data you want, you must interact with another program, a restaurant, to get said food. To interact with the restaurant, you need to make a request by placing an order in a specific way defined by an API, in this case the menu. If you try to request in the wrong way, you won't get what you want. Here the API is the menu. Menus define a list of functionality, here dishes, and when someone requests one of those dishes, the restaurant does a bunch of stuff and ultimately sends the requested dish back. In software development, an API defines a list of commands, and when a program uses one of those commands, the other program does a bunch of stuff and sends back what was requested by that command, which is usually some kind of data. Now, this analogy isn't perfect. There are many ways you can order food in order to get the same result. This is not true with programs, as they are not as flexible as humans. When you make a request to another program, it has to be formatted in a very specific way, or else you'll get an error back. What you request has to be on the menu or in the API in order to get the data you want back. Overall, an API defines a list of functionality, as well as the necessary format for that functionality. When a company releases their API, it means they are telling the world that this is what you can get from our program, and here's how you can get it. Or in the restaurant analogy, here's the menu. Let's take a look at one of the Google Maps APIs, the geocoding API. It will give us the geographic coordinates for a particular address. Now, this geocoding API is our menu. It's how we get data or information from Google Maps, or at least the geocoding side of it. To order something from this menu, we'll need to make a request. And so scrolling down, we see they have geocoding, reverse geocoding. You can read all about that here. But this is what we want, sample, request, and response. That's how we can kind of figure out how this API works, how this geocoding API works. You can access it through the HTTP interface, and we're going to have some examples. Now, here it says we'll need an API key, but I've found that with certain requests, our request goes through anyway. If you're interested in learning about what an API key is, comment down below and I'll make a quick video about it. But for now, let's look at this API. With every API, we'll have a request and a response. Here in red, we have a sample request. In this case, we want to get the geocode for this address, which is 1600 Amphitheater Parkway, Mountain View, California. Let's go ahead and copy this into a browser. And we're going to delete the part about our API key. And here we go. Now, yours may look different than mine. Um, yours might just look similar to this, just a bunch of raw text, maybe not formatted like this. But I have a Google Chrome extension. I'll link it down below that I use just so you know it's easier to see the data, organize the data. It just looks a lot better. Or it's easier to read, if you will. 
Um, but what exactly is happening here? Here we're making a request to one of Google Maps APIs, the geocoding API, and we're giving it the address 1600 Amphitheater Parkway, Mountain View, California. That was our request. We sent it in a browser and then down here is our response. This is the data we get back from Google. And it's a bunch of data. It's about you know what types of buildings it has and the long name and the short name, all these address components, the street number. It can break down what we gave it into different parts, break down our string input into multiple parts. Um, as you can see, you can scroll through this data. And what geocoding is really supposed to do is turn that street address into geographic coordinates. And that's what we see down here below. Now, what would happen if we changed the address? Let's say I don't want to know about Mountain View because I live here in New York. I want to learn about 14. Um, this is just kind of near Central Park. If you know New York, um, we're going to go East 60th Street. Um, and then, of course, New York, if I can format this correctly. And notice it's pretty, you know, it's formatted in a specific way. And so we'll do New York and then plus. New York. We'll go ahead and hit enter and there we go. It broke down this address into multiple parts. If we just wanted to use the component side, you know, breaking down the address into components for this API, this is the request we sent, this is the response we got. We could only use that functionality. We could just pull this data out and not even care about the geographic coordinates. It's all about what you need in your program and what functionality you're looking for. You don't have to use everything an API gives you, but it might take a, you know, a certain amount of time for the API to return certain things. So that's something to consider as well. But this one, very quick, just a quick look up for Google here. Thinking back to our menu metaphor, this request, this was like our order. We sent it into Seamless, we sent it into the waiter, and then the response is our food here. This is what we get back because we sent in that order. If we sent in a different order, we might have gotten something else back. Going back to the main page, you'll see that this was the sample request, and then here was a sample response where it goes through the address components, and this was all good to go here, along with you know the latitude, the longitude, all of that good stuff. And then they also have the reverse geocoding. You can learn about that. Again, here's a sample request, a sample response. Feel free to test that out if you wish to get some more practice with APIs, just using them here in the browser. Now you can also use these in your code. You know, what good is it to have your data out here when you can have it in your program, when you can have it in your iOS app or in your web application or on your website? Like what good does this do? Well, that is for a different video. If you're interested in that, comment down below what language you wanna see APIs you know, called in. Do you want them in your web application? Do you want them in your VR application in Unity? Like what do you want? Comment down below. What are you looking for? Now, what do APIs mean? Ultimately, they make it possible for programs to interact with each other. This is especially important for programs because they can be written in many different languages. So APIs provide a means for different programs to talk in a common language. APIs also mean that users don't need to leave your program to use someone else's. For example, by using YouTube's API, you can request YouTube videos and have them play on your web page without the user having to leave your website and go find your YouTube channel. APIs also reduce complexity. When you order from a restaurant, you don't need to worry about the precise heating or chopping of ingredients or plating a dish, that sort of thing. Instead, you can simply order the menu item and everything else is taken care of. APIs also allow you to build one app off of another app allowing you to separate functionality into modules more easily. So that's it for this video. If you're interested in more technical tutorials, be sure to subscribe down below. There's some freebies in the description box if you're interested in that type of stuff. Um, and follow me on Instagram if you want some behind the scenes. I hope you learned something new in this video and thanks for watching.